fellow reef enthusiasts, uh, especially my reef moonshiner brothers and sisters. I wanted to talk to you today a little bit about something that's been coming up on our Reef Shiner Support Group Facebook page very frequently uh, due to tons of pictures of people submitting of their tank, uh, especially the through shots through the length of their tank, uh, asking how they get that level of clarity within their water. Uh, and nine times out of ten, the answer has been a power filter. So what I want to do for you today is I want to go through um, a couple reasons as to why you would want a power filter, uh, some reasons maybe why you would not want a power filter, and show you exactly how I built my power filter here. Uh, I'll go through step by step, as well as giving you some different options of things that you could change uh, with my model to make it maybe even a little bit cheaper and maybe even a little bit less maintenance. So this is something that is completely up to you on how you want to move forward with it. It's a very simple thing to build, it's very effective. So we'll just get right into it and talk a little bit about why we would want to use a power filter. The biggest reason why anyone is gonna want a power filter is water clarity. So all of that detritus uh, that gets stirred up, all that leftover food, um, whatever else it might be, fish poop, all that stuff that stays suspended in the water column and doesn't quite make it into your overflow this power filter is going to pull right out of the water for you. So that's going to be the biggest reason why. So why is water clarity so important? Well, number one, it looks good, right? But even more importantly, you're talking about water clarity and its effect on light penetration. Now, BRS did a study, I recommend you all go look at that, as to the effects of the yellow tinted water where they were not running granulated carbon versus a system that had pristine blue water that was running granulated carbon. And they found that it was about a 20 to 30% loss in PAR that you could have from a yellow, from yellow tinted water that was not running carbon. So I know for the majority of people running the Reef Moonshiners method, uh, you are running carbon to help clarify that water. So why wouldn't you have something to help pull not just a tint out of the water, but actual solids floating around, preventing that light from getting to our precious corals? So that's gonna be, you know, an even bigger reason um, as to why you want to run a power filter. But obviously, it looks great. So, let me go ahead and talk to you a little bit about Howie and why I definitely need a power filter in this tank. This is Howie. He is my Diamond Sleeper Goby. I know a lot of people know them as Diamond Watchman Gobies, but they're actually a Sleeper Goby being a Sand Sifting Goby. This is a fantastic fish to have. I've never cleaned my sand bed. I've had very little diatoms on my sand bed at almost any given point in time throughout the life of my tank. And I accredit that mainly to Howie. Most of the fish in my tank are utilitarian fish. There's a few in here that really don't serve much of a purpose other than just to fill the water column, Chromis. But he's just one of those fish that I had to have and I added him in my tank right away. As you can see, I have pink Fiji sand. So it's a very fine sand, which is perfect for a goby such as this. So that's one reason why you might actually want a power filter. So let's talk a little bit about how we're gonna go about building uh, this power filter. So I'm gonna go through just the bare minimum of what you're gonna need. But if you want to go a little bit more in depth, there's actually a third item that, that I added that just kind of seems like it makes it last a little bit longer. So instead of having to change out the pad every two days, I've changed it out about every four to five days. Doesn't seem like a lot, but that's just a lot more maintenance on the tank that, that I really don't want to do if I don't have to. So anything that I can do to help increase the, the running time on this without me having to mess with it, me putting my hands in the tank, the better off I am. So the first thing that you're going to need is going to be an internal... Uh, aquarium filter, just something with a pump and something that sucks the water up through. Talk a little bit more in depth when we take it out of the box as to how this functions, because that's the important part is how this draws in the water. So we'll talk a little bit more about that. And then you're obviously going to need some filter floss, polishing pads, whatever you want. I'm personally using 100 micron. That works great for me. You could go 200 micron if you wanted. You could even go down to five micron or maybe one 
but good luck, you're gonna be changing it out every single day. So when we actually take the filter out of the box, which I already, already unboxed it, you get uh, a couple different things. So you have this filter canister that is actually made up of three different canisters. Now, this is another reason why I chose this particular model instead of some of the other ones out there, is that I have three. So I can choose how many of these that I wanna put in the tank, which again, increases my avail available runtime without me having to mess with it. The other thing it's gonna come with is obviously the pump. So this one uh, is rated at 475 gallons per hour, which for a tank my size, 150 gallon, uh, I think it does a very good job. There are a few other options out there, not with the same features as this, that do go up, I think to about 600. And then obviously another reason that I liked this one is that it actually came with a directional flow nozzle. Um, again, not a big deal. I don't think a lot of people would care, but I kind of like where the flow is at in my tank and I didn't want to disrupt that too much uh, by having another 400 gallon per hour pump pointed in a direction that's going to conflict with my current flow patterns. Just that off to the side. Now, my stock, what it's going to come with is it's actually going to come with these nice little tubes that are filled with carbon. Um, I'm not sure if you can see, but inside of here, there's just a little uh, disc. You can actually pop that out and refill the carbon or just take the carbon out entirely if you want. Um, I figured, hey, they gave me free carbon. Went ahead and rinsed uh, these pellets off and should be good to go for at least a few weeks before I even need to bother changing them out or just taking them out entirely. But key thing here is um, you do want to use these tubes. So don't just throw them to the side and not use them. You're going to want to use them. I liked the modularity of this so that if I wanted to run two filters, I could just run two filters. Top filter, second filter, carbon ring, and in. So I could run it as two filters. I could even run it as a single filter if I wanted it to not be such an eyesore in my tank. The other reason that I went with this one too is because these are semi-transparent. Most of the ones you're gonna see are gonna be black. Um, and that's perfectly fine. It's, aesthetically, it's gonna look a lot nicer, especially if you have uh, black back glass, which I do not, mine's a double-sided tank. So there, that is an option that you can run with. Um, however, I like the clear because I wanna see exactly how well it's doing. And we'll talk again a little bit more about the functionality and how this works here when we set it up. But I like to know exactly how this is working and having that semi-transparent casing or tube is gonna allow me exactly that. So let me go ahead, I'll take these apart and we'll come back and we'll actually put it together doing the first way, which is gonna be the simplest way. All right, so when we're all said and done, this is what you're gonna be left with. Three casings, your three original pads, and then your carbon tubes, as we'll call them. You're not gonna need these um, for a much better filter, but there is a time and there is a place for this. Um, it just depends on whether you choose to use these or not. Um, in this particular, I guess we'll call it the, the easy model, we're gonna go ahead and use these because why not? The extra filtration isn't gonna hurt. So we'll go ahead and we'll stuff these in here. Okay, we'll go ahead and stuff our carbon tubes in, pop the bottom on, the next one on. Make sure that it actually fits up in there. I hope that you can see that. Then in, do the next one, pop the next one on, do the next one, and put on the top. Cool. So now this is exactly how it's going to come out of the box. So if you wanted to do it this way, you could just take it right on the box, rinse it off, um, and get cracking on this filter. So first way is going to be the easiest way. And I'm just going to take a basic 100 micron polishing pad. Uh, these guys sell for like $14 and it's just a huge, huge sheet. It's more than I'll use for quite a long time. Now there's two sides to this. There's the rough side and there's the soft side. So you want the rough side to go towards the middle. So you want it to pull the water through the soft side into the rough side. So this is how easy this is going to be. We're going to take this and we're going to roll it out. We're kind of going to get our measurement just to a little bit of an overlap. We're going to figure out where that is, as well as the length. Make sure that's lined up. And we're just going to just cut a sleeve. 
for it. My dull scissors because I can't find my knife sharpener right now. I assume it's with my hunting stuff. It. Yeah, if you have a sharp enough scissors, you should be able to just strum right through this, just like you would do with a uh, wrapping paper. All right, so we're done with that. I have a nice little sleeve that I made here, and then I'm gonna use. You could use rubber bands if you want, but I'm actually gonna use my daughter's hair ties because they're white. Um, they're just they're perfect for this. Uh, burn through them pretty quickly. You can't really use them more than once, but uh, they work pretty well. So we'll go ahead and we'll actually stretch this out. We'll wrap it up. You could do a, as much overlap as you want. I don't want to do too much just because I don't want to waste any. And then we'll take our hair tie or rubber band, whatever you decide to use. We'll go right over it. This side. Stretch it in. And honestly, you could probably get away with using, you know, six or seven or eight of these rubber bands. Probably the more, the more the better, uh, just to ensure that you have as much of a, a seal as possible. For this example, I will do three, and that should give us a, a decent idea of how this is going to function. And that's it. That'll be the easiest way to do it. And then we'll take our pump. So I'll just slide right on, put the directional knot on if you so choose. For me, I was just wanting it upward, surface agitation. You stick it on vertically, you stick it on horizontally. However you choose to do it is up to you based on your tank's layout and where you feel you're going to have the most benefit. I personally put it vertically right now just because then I have a little bit more of the water column that I'm pulling out different things from and it just works out better for my tank. So this is going to be the easiest way to build this. Probably with this version uh, than the other version, but I at least want to go through it with you. So the reason for these carbon tubes is I actually create a tube for the, the water to flow through, okay? So I've been using this for almost what, a week and a half, two weeks now, and I can tell you firsthand exactly how this works and I just from my experience so your pump it's gonna attach to the top and that creates a seal that pulls the water through the chambers through the carbon tubes and then up okay so obviously the first thing that's gonna fill up is gonna be this top chamber right because that's gonna it's gonna take the path of least resistance it takes a lot less effort for this pump to pull water closer to the pump than it does further from the pump. But by about the first day, this one is completely full of gunk. And then you'll gradually start to see this start to fill, and then this start to fill. And then by the time I get to this one, and I get about to the center mark here, and this one starts to get gunky, I know it's time to swap it out because it can no longer pull much water from here or here and it's starting to really pull from that bottom section so i know at that point that my filters are pretty much to capacity and i need to go ahead and swap these out so it's just kind of an overview of how this works and why it is so important to keep those carbon filters in there um, because that's what's going to direct your water flow and ensure that these work this next way we're going to use an additional piece now like i said this isn't necessary you could go with the other way but this is going to be your uh two-tone, I want to call it filter pad, right? So this is going to have your standard filter floss, which we're going to put the water through first, that's then going to go through a polishing pad. And then if you want to take even an extra step, it can go through another of your 100 micron. So I cannot get the stats on this, but I'm fairly confident that this is about 400, 200 to 400 micron. Uh, the filter floss, is obviously going to be almost more like a mesh mat more than anything, but it is going to grab stuff. You'd be surprised. So I can go from just a standard filter floss pulling the biggest particles up first. That's going to then flow through the 200, 200 or 400. 
that's going to pull out you know some of the finer particles and then to my 100. This is exactly how if you have an RODI unit at home this is how your sediment filter should be set up. It should go through and pull out the thickest sediment then to the finest sediment because if I did it the other way and I started pulling out the fine first well obviously the thicker sediment's not going to get through this so then what's the point of it right you need to start with you know your more coarse filter and then work your way in towards a more fine filter so I'm just going to show you quick exactly how I do this I will then stop the video because you don't need to watch me do this whole thing and then I'll do the other the other two sections and then we'll put it in the tank and see how she goes so all then all I do is take this floss just like this I have it already cut out to the proper size to fit in here I would recommend you go a little bit wider than this because it's going to compress and it's going to ensure that there's no leaks in there for any water full of sediment to get through now You'll see with these that it can only pull water through these grooves. I have seen people actually cut these grooves out to leave a little wider area for the pumps to pull water through, but a 475 gallon per hour pump is only gonna pull that out. The only time that that's really gonna matter is if A, you're only using one of these and you need more flow because it doesn't have as much gaps to pull the water through, or if you're letting your filters get all full of gunk and you're not changing them out every, you know, three to five days, probably maybe sometimes seven days, if you have a relatively clean and detritus free tank, or you don't have a diamond goby like me. So this is how we're going to go ahead and do this. So we have the coarse floss, 400, 200, 100. Again, this is not necessary, but if you want to have that extra polishing power, if you do have very fine particles, I would highly recommend spending the money to get a sheet of this. So put that down. I'm going to put the knob end. So we'll call this the male end and this the female end. You can see how this works just like that. So I'm going to put the male end down. I'm going to leave it exposed just a little bit and I'm going to go ahead and just roll this up. It doesn't really matter how tight you do it right now, but you need to be able to fit it inside of the canister. So I'll put it inside the canister until the male end is just exposed. And then I'll come in here and I'll just unroll the floss just a little bit here. Just so that it makes, you know, it's met up with its, its other end. Now you might have a little bit of a gap in here between the filter pad and the, the filter pad and the carbon tube, but don't worry about it. It's not going to matter. It's still going to draw water in as long as you make that really nice seal. And then from there, we can either connect it to the bottom or we can put it on to the next one, which I'll go ahead and do that off camera. There we go. And there's one done. I'm going to go ahead and pause the camera. I'll finish these up and we'll come back and I'll show you the finished project and we'll put it in the tank. All right, it's all built. We have three sections with the filter floss and the filter pad curled up in there. So it goes from coarse to fine. So we'll go ahead and uh, I'm gonna rinse this or soak it in RODI water for a couple of minutes. Uh, kind of rinse it out, just to make sure that you know, there's no contaminants or oils or anything. Uh, as little as possible as I can get in the tank, the better. So I'm gonna go ahead, do that, and then I will put it in the tank. Take you guys along for the journey here. We'll see how she goes. All right, and that's how you're going to build a, your own power filter. Um, this one right here, the way that I did it, it was, cost me about $66, which, I mean, is, is pretty good considering what you're getting. I know a lot of you probably already have filter pad or even polishing pads sitting around, and maybe even if you had old filter socks that you wanted to use, you could do this even cheaper, get a $34 pump. Uh, there are some cheaper options. I'll, I will go ahead and post everything that I use in the description below as well as some alternatives just in case any of these are available or maybe you want something different like say uh, maybe a black pump instead. So if you have any questions please post them in the comment below. I will be more than happy to answer any questions that you might have. Um, but overall it's a fairly simple experience. Uh, there's not much learning curve to it. You'll figure it out and I promise you it'll run perfectly. Um, I can actually see the bubbles clearing in my tank now. It's been running for about 10 minutes. I'll take you over there and give you one last look. Um, 
So filter's been running for about 10 minutes. You can see quite a few micro bubbles still in there, but I mean, overall, that's all it is. There's a little bit of detritus, but my diamond goby's been going to town today, so. Uh, but already, let's see if you can see that. It's already pulling crud in. This is a brand new filter. You saw me cut it and put it in there. And already you can see that it is pulling gunk through. Now, one thing you'll notice, like I said, is that this top filter, because again, it's gonna take the path of least resistance, is gonna be the first one it fills up. And we can already see that being the case. There's already a bunch of stuff that's getting put into the filter floss. Whereas down here, as you get down to the bottom section, there isn't much of anything. But, you know, this is all gonna be your own decision on how you want to do it. I could run just one filter, change it out every couple of days. You could run two filters, run all three. I want to say there's a couple out there that go up to 660 gallons per hour and they have five different sections. So you could even do that if you wanted to. Um, but one key thing though, if you let this run, you know, and it's catching fish poop and it's catching extra food if you don't shut off for a few hours after you feed, um, you know, what you're going to have is the ability for that stuff to start decomposing rather quickly. So if you do leave it for more than a few days, um, that could increase the phosphates and the nitrates in your tank. So if you already have a nutrient problem, make sure that you're changing this out more frequently. So maybe going to one filter or two filters might be a better option because it's going to force you to not leave this for too long to where you're going to have that decomposition happening and your nutrients level spiking drastically. So other than that, it's a very simple process. It's very effective. But again, if anyone has any questions, please feel free to comment um, or even message me directly and I'll be happy to help. Um, if there's anyone out there that wants help building one or wants one to be built, I would also be more than happy to do that for you. So, but as you saw, it isn't a difficult process. I know some people just aren't comfortable with these kinds of things. So thank you again. I'll leave you guys with one last look at the tank and I um, hope everybody has a great rest of their day. Take care. six days later. So if you're like me and you have a sleeper goby, diamond goby, any kind of sand sifting goby, this is what your filter is going to expect to look like after about three or four days. Now keep in mind, you know, this tank's only been set up for a little over a week. So I have a little bit more detritus and junk that's getting stirred up within my sand bed because it is fairly fresh and not completely packed down yet. Um, as much as it could be, given the situation.